Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Life Wide Open podcast. We're on the road this week, and we've got a great one with Gab. But before we get into it, I've got a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Make mealtime easy with delicious recipes made with fresh, wholesome ingredients delivered to your door. No lines, no hassle, just great tasting meals you can whip up and enjoy in the comfort of your home, or in this case, an RV. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WideOpen60 and use code WideOpen60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WideOpen60 and use code WideOpen60 for 60 percent off plus free shipping ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every marketplace in one simple dashboard with the best discounts in the industry you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping and if that's not enough use our promo code to try ShipStation free for two months so keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. use promo code wide open today at shipstation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial that's shipstation.com promo code wide open let's get into the podcast Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Life Wide Open podcast. We are here in Gavin's surprisingly palatial mountain home. <laughs> We're here, fellas. Uh, good to have you, Gav. Can you just quick give me a definition of that word? Never heard palatial. Of, yeah, never heard in my life. I would say like large, okay. palace-like. Yeah, love it. It's beautiful. Gavin's got a big family, and they all come through here. And we went skiing today. It's beautiful. Can't beat it, Breckenridge baby. Good to have you, Gav. This is most of our first times in Colorado. It's, it's fun to be on your turf. What did you guys think about the compound? I loved it. Your home compound? The compound. I thought it was great. It was so you. <laughs> it really was. Everything it, about it, from the, the uh, trailer with the hole in the back to oh. jump through, and then the uh, homemade trailer jump. <laughs> oh, that, that was a good one, huh? You like the trailer <laughs> jump? It, it works. And just like yeah, we found that out. Just walking into Gavin's shed, is, there's a pretty decent-sized shed in the property, and it is packed full of three wheelers, like yeah, we knew you had three wheelers. I thought you had like under ten. No, <laughs> we're, we're doing pretty well. I like I said, I was killing it up in the mountains. Been taking some time off, but fifty dollars a three wheeler, you couldn't beat it back then. Dude, I can't believe that you have twenty two three wheelers and you've put three grand into it. Been like, very very blessed, and I know how to work a deal. I mean, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, you tried. Yeah, work, I did. I tried mean, working the deal even more. He guys telling us he's he picked up a three wheeler for no joke, a six pack of beer. Not even like, a thirty rack. Oh, I didn't I even know a six pack was currency pack. anymore. It was Italian beer. <laughs> it was Italian beer, too. I, don't, I was like, "What do you want, man?" He goes, "Just give me some uh, Italian beer." Italian uh, beer. Yeah, I was like, "All right, bro. Okay, whatever you want." But yeah, I was just cruising down, cruising down the road in Gunnison. And this dude's like, "Hey, pull over, pull over." I was like, "What? What could this be about?" And uh, yeah, he's like, "Roll down your window." He's like, "Do you love three wheelers?" I have the 350X on the back. You're like, I love three wheelers. Hell yeah, I love three wheelers, brother. Talk to me. And he goes, Well, I work over at the young uh, over at the lumber yard. We got an old Yamaha sitting back there. I was like, Oh, keep telling me more. Keep telling me more. He's like, I <laughs> keep don't know. talking to me. It has three wheels, and it's right up your alley. Probably. I was like, All right, I'll follow you right there. Followed him over there. I was like, Oh, it doesn't run. He's like, No. I was like, Oh, it's perfect. Let's Typical go. Typical Yamaha. Yeah, perfect Yamaha. Oh. <laughs> but then you went to the store after. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him the six pack, load the three wheeler up. Now I have it. Gav, yeah, you just continue to amaze me. You get more interesting every single time that I hang out with you. My favorite part about the last podcast is everyone kind of got to see like <laughs> what you're actually like. Not that the videos are anything different, but the podcast was so high energy the entire time. People asked me like I got a bunch of questions of like friends like all right was he just putting on a show for the podcast too and I was like no that is like his actual form 24 7 dude it's just about staying stoked having fun man and just loving life just loving freaking life sorry Mike. <laughs> you could, I was just trying to get the mic closer to your face but yeah like I was saying just stay freaking stoked I mean that's that's all it's about <laughs> no, yeah, I was like, why was that podcast so uh, high energy? Because Gavin was on it. Yeah, we just stayed stoked, had fun. I mean, it's about having fun with your friends, making memories, dude, and that's all we're living here for. Yeah. So, so we're on what day five now Jeez. of our RV trip? Is it is it five? Many? Can someone get a fact check on that? <laughs> I think four, but it feels like more. Yeah, so we're on day four of our RV trip now. We came out to Colorado actually early to surprise Gavin with a new three-wheeler, which you guys have seen on the previous video, but... Not just any three-wheeler. The Mac Daddy. <laughs> the macaroni, the full baby, <laughs> everything, man. You can't beat the 250R. I'm about to cry because it was really setting in when I was in... I was in the shower earlier, and I almost started crying. I was like, 
That's in that trailer right there. That's Did you it. actually? No, I swear. I shut really up. no. I I almost shut up. Like it's <laughs> unreal to look at, dude. What? It's the most beautiful machine in the world. It's a Honda. It's a 250R, and it wants to fly. It just wants to fly. <laughs> My goodness, yeah, does it want to fly? Yeah. yeah. Oh, baby, does it want to fly? Are you good after I'm after hurt. like jumping? Eight feet straight to your back. Eight feet straight to the back, and then we took the wrist out today, but we're ready for Moab, dude. We are, we are looking locked and loaded. Get the move on in the morning and have some fun. I've yeah. never met somebody who's able to take such a crash and then just hop back up and keep going. Football will do a lot to a guy, I'll tell you that. Like, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it besides just you're just tough. But then we're like, dude, you went through this, that, this, and that. You're like, how are you not beat up? You're like, football was like that every day. So I guess dude, if it really was. Dude, when you're clashing heads with a freaking 220-pound freaking running back, nothing <laughs> sucks more than that. I'll tell you that. I'd rather take a digger on a 250 or any day of the week. <laughs> you have been getting beat up this trip more than normal, I guess, hanging out with us, right? A little bit more than normal, but I mean, I'm, I'm used to hitting a culvert. Used to, I know. A culvert? A culvert. Can I take the ditch? Can I oh, hit the true, ditch? Oh, true, 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 true. Yeah, yeah, I hit the ditch a little too hard. That was a good digger. The neck took that one well. Just stay in the gym. Stay healthy. Would you consider yourself to be injury prone? Ben would say I'm injury prone, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I would say you're accident prone, not injury prone. Well, that's that's true, oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, you're that's accident good. prone because you just managed to wreck, <laughs> crash, or break everything, bro. And it's amazing to watch. But as a friend, I'm concerned about you. Mm -hmm. Dude. Like, I'm constantly stressing over your every move. It's uh, it's all controlled risk. It's all for fun. No, I don't think it is controlled risk. Well, Slightly controlled, man. I weigh it out. I, I do I, so. I do the fun to risk ratio. And as long as it's like like one more percent fun, I'm running it. Honestly, Evan is a great example of controlled risk because he's very talented. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you're going with that, and then I was like, oh. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Keep so talking. What, so what am I? I think you're just sketchy, bro. Why? What? Am I that? Like, you saw that jump on the 450? <laughs> you know I can land some shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Don't take that. Yes, what do you mean? What I jump? got a little too... When he cleared the, the tabletop. Right? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mike. But yeah, the 250R, <laughs> that was a rough run up. I should have avoided it. But shit, don't give me shit for that. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I I'm okay. It's really interesting because, I mean, I've heard everyone in the crew go, eh, nah, it, it seems a little sketchy or on certain levels, but I rarely hear you say that. It seems like most things that come into your head are like, yeah, I think we can run that. Dude, there's not much you can't run. I mean, if you have the mindset, we're going to freaking run this, there's a good chance <laughs> we're freaking running this. Yeah, I know. We have found that out. Yeah. I mean, the, the stair steps today. I saw Ben running it over again. I, I ran it once, but I was like, ah, Ben's running. I better run it with him. <laughs> yeah, to add, add some, some context. context uh, yeah. <laughs> Gavin, Whoa. Gavin and I rode down these metal stairs on snowboard. He was on a snowboard. I was on skis. Um, and Gavin face planted onto pretty much a cheese grater. They were not yeah. normal stairs. They were like metal like chicken yeah. wire design, oh. but thicker. Evan, Evan had go, the perfect name for it. The call Colorado out cheese grater. grater. Yep. I go, you good, bro? He goes, yeah, I just sprained <laughs> my wrist. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> we need to like get you in a brace or no, something. There's mm -hmm. nothing. We'll put a little duct tape on it tomorrow from Moab. Call it dialed. We'll have some ripping in. Yeah, I, luckily it's not your throttle wrist. No, just the clutch one. So I'm a little worried about the 250R, but we got the SX all day. Still mm -hmm. Willie games. You like that, Ev? Okay, good. It, it was amazing the crowd that gathered to watch you two ride down those stairs. I don't know if you guys really noticed because obviously you were focused on riding down the stairs, but there was a good crowd of people that were all like, and you hear the murmurs, I would never do that to my skis. Why are these guys doing it? You really don't come across people being that stupid that often. You know? <laughs> right. So when you do, you're going to stop and watch. Like I remember looking around at the crowd that was gathering and just being like, you guys are witnessing greatness. Greatness. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Something like Yo, that. Yo, so, Ben, you, can you elaborate a little bit on, you know, the, the what it took to conjure up the idea to prank Gavin and and get him this three-wheeler? Dude. Because okay. A lot went into it. A it, ton. It did. I mean, it originally started the idea. Ryan was like, yo, we should uh, uh, get, like, some fake seller 
and then have the have Gavin come over to buy this three wheeler, and then have the daughter come out. And and then have the guy start like freaking out at Gavin for looking at his daughter, or have the daughter be like, "Oh, what the fuck did you look at my ass?" or like something like that, and just making it really uncomfortable. And then that was like a lot of moving parts. And then yeah, I was talking to Tyler, Gavin's filmer, and we just came up with with the U-Haul idea. So renting a U-Haul, getting an actor to be the seller, and then basically kidnapping <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> I mean, in the U-Haul, basically kidnapping you, Gavin. Honestly, you just have to watch the video. It makes a little bit more sense because I like explain it pretty well in the video, and then you see the whole process right. of it. But um, yeah, there was like a lot of moving moving parts that went into it, and then getting uh, Butler, the actor, to do it. Like he was perfect for it, and um, yeah, I, I honestly I don't think it could have gone any better. I don't even like thinking about it. I mean, I have, I do have a little bit of PTSD. The door slammed the other day, and I was like, oh, oh, I'm locked. Yeah, I guess. I was, I was okay, but yeah. For anyone that didn't see it, uh, we had Gavin hop in the back of this U-Haul thinking that he was buying this three-wheeler that we had already bought. And, and uh, I think we should pull up, if, if Ken could pull up his computer, I think we should react to the video playing, kind of like watch the, it back, because it is the, the iPhone video that is taken of it is so good yeah. of gab just literally losing his mind i was ready to go i was ready to do anything i had i wanted that three-wheeler but i mean we're still on the craigslist it's looking good i mean looking normal not many three-wheeler listings 250r 1985 popping up i was like oh what, what do we got going here it's looking a little too mint says it was just well, taken out of a storage unit yeah i mean it's a ten thousand dollar unit and i posted it for 1500 bucks <laughs> which i thought seemed extremely scamish um, like too I, good of a deal, and then Gav shows up and he goes, "Would you take a <laughs> thousand? <laughs> like I said, you got to work it. You got to get the as cheap as you can. As yeah. cheap as you can. I love that though. You already you already had like a good deal. Oh yeah. In oh. your in your head there, and you were like, "But I can make it better." Did yeah. you think that maybe that was why he slammed the door on you? Because he no, not at yeah, all. I thought, dude, thinking? I just thought I was freaking getting kidnapped. I dude, had there that was. was there were so many holes in it. Like, why would that guy ever kidnap you? No <laughs> I don't know if you're. We his were type laughing of about guy. that later. Like, it, it, you, a, a guy your size, just the odds of you getting kidnapped are so slim. But, dude, yeah. So Tyler's in there with you, and you're freaking out, and you're like, I mean, why don't you bring your oh why your arm? Yeah, why'd you not bring? Yeah, why'd you not bring it? Why'd you not? I told you. We, well, we told him not to. I was yeah, talking right. to Tyler, and I said, dude. Yeah, like you can absolutely not let Gavin grab a, and I was even like, don't even let him get a knife because like once we do open it back up, I don't want him to have like some knife ready. And we, I was concerned that he was gonna have like the dolly, which I later saw that he was banging up against the door. I thought he was gonna have the dolly like cocked and loaded yeah, for as soon as the swing. door opened up to like hit whoever was standing there. But <laughs> oh, fuck. so so yeah, we're about to react to the footage from. From Tyler filming, there. This is both of them getting locked inside the U-Haul. It's just too good. It's it's as real as it gets. Look at that baby. And Gav could not I, help but getting in because the four wheeler or three wheeler, my bad, was so mint. You couldn't help but get in. I love how it's tucked in the back of this U-Haul in just the most sketchy way. Just one wheeler, nothing else in there. Yeah, weren't you questioning what was what you were walking into? Dude, no, he was he was selling it pretty well. Once he told me he found it in a storage unit in Thornton, I was like, ah. Oh. He's pretty legit. He knows what he's talking about. Still a little skeptical on how clean it was. So when we're posted up watching it all play out, you stand in there for like, oh, I don't know, two minutes probably without shutting it. And I gave him strict instructions. As soon as he gets in there, <laughs> shut, shut that it. thing down. Don't let him like, you know, come back and forth and like, because I didn't, I didn't know how good of an actor he was going to be and how much he was going to try and like sell it. Yeah. And I was like, dude. You don't have to do more than you need to. Just introduce yourself, let Gavin hop in, and shut that thing down. <laughs> you suck, dude. <laughs> You're roasting so, him on how well he did at kidnapping you. It's so <laughs> great. great. It's, it's so great. It's terrible. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I'm in there, and I'm like, oh, this this can't be real. I'm I'm seriously thinking. I'm about to walk away with this. He got it at a storage unit for free. Oh, you thought he, you were going to kick him in the nuts. He oh. doesn't know what it's worth. No, he has no yeah. clue what it's worth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him 1000 bucks cash right now. And we're going to go do some freaking wheelies. All right, that's what's going through my head. And I walk back over to give one last glance at it. And he goes, I really think it's worth a thousand. Or I really think it's worth 1500 uh. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, everybody, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Make mealtime easy with delicious recipes made with fresh, wholesome ingredients delivered to your door. No lines, no hassle, just great tasting meals you can whip up and enjoy in the comfort of your home, or in this case, our RV. Uh, I went to the store and I bought a bunch of junk food, basically. I thought I grocery shop, but it ended up just being uh, junk food. So we brought a, along a couple HelloFresh meal kits. It's been great to have pre-portioned meals. Uh, we don't have to bring anything extra. It's all right there. You just take it out of the bag, cook it up. We at least get something healthy on the road. With HelloFresh, you're getting seasonal ingredients picked at peak ripeness for quality you can taste. Ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WideOpen60 and use code WideOpen60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WideOpen60 and use code WideOpen60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Thanks, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. As a buyer, there's no better perk than free shipping. And as a business owner, there's no better perk than paying less for shipping. In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. Keep yourself competitive with ShipStation. When you use ShipStation, you can lower shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. And with all the time you save from automating your shipping tasks, you can keep your business growing all year long. When we first started selling clothes from CBoysTV.com, setting up a fulfillment was a daunting task. We didn't really know what to do, and we didn't want to spend any extra money that we didn't have to but when we found ship station use a free trial we haven't looked back we couldn't do our fulfillment without it we've been using it for years and uh i honestly see no reason to switch with the best discounts in the industry you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping get up to 84 percent off usps and ups rates and if that's not enough use our promo code to try ship station free for two months keep growing your business all year long with ship station use promo code wide open today at shipstation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial that's shipstation.com promo code code wide open <laughs> all right let's play it this is this is starting at that oh my gosh dude if you wouldn't have slipped you would have gotten out I know. oh my gosh oh, so <laughs> dude, this, is my favorite part. this is my favorite part hitting it with oh, the, with the dolly bro oh using it at no from the outside, we were watching the footage back of the outside view, and you just see, boom, dude, boom, boom. I, I can't door even... getting shaken, and I was like, man, he's really hitting this door with his like fist or if something, I, if, and then if, watching the well, footage yeah. back makes if a little If Tyler sense. wouldn't have just been filming, I would have gotten through. I guarantee that, because if I would have had two people swinging that dolly, we would have been right through that door. But you, no, I don't. <laughs> what? I would do. There was movement happening. There was movement. You would not have swung that dolly through the door. You through think? the top. I think I would have gotten through the top corner at least. I think I would have opened up a corner and been able to peel it. You think so? I think so. With enough freak out in me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You were going psycho. I was, yeah, yeah, but the, but Rightfully I, so, I mean. Oh, yeah. I was around the corner and filming pretty far away, and as soon as the door slammed, I could hear you screaming. And, like, true, like, that you were actually scared. And in that moment, I went, ooh, is this prank too far? Dude, it was very, <laughs> very close to too far. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, listen, if you hadn't given me the three wheeler, it would have been too far. Bro, it was too far. 100%. No, it, was it was not too far. Too far. It, it was, was funny. But it was beautiful. Ah! Because I might have PTSD, <laughs> fellas. <laughs> Every time Gav sees a U-Haul, he's going to start sweating. No, I swear. Like, I'm never getting close to one again. Never helping anyone move again. I'm not moving. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler said when they got back, they were in his shop, and the wind, like, had a draft go through it, and it pulled the garage door down. Oh, my gosh. Gavin got spooked. Dude, I about had a heart attack. I had a heart attack. I mean, you can't. Uh, I, no, it's reasonable, but fuck. No, I, <laughs> honestly, bro, I'm sorry. Obviously, for like the fact of of the video, it was hilarious. Oh no, your, I can't. Your reaction was as genuine as it gets. Um, but yeah, that that was pretty far, dude. It yeah. I mean, I thought I was gone. I didn't know what was happening. I thought maybe we end up in Mexico. All right, that couldn't be too bad. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it's gonna be nice I there. Guess, I just remember you saying to me two things that really just made me laugh about the whole situation. One was I was getting out of there. If we, he would have kept driving, let's say the drive would have been because Ben and CJ took him around the block, you know, 
how three minutes had you been driving for 10 you're like i would have got out of there and then two you're like yeah for a second i thought i was gonna die but wasn't gonna do it without a fight no there oh i was in fighter dude you someone was saying i wasn't ready to fight i was you ready to, i don't think you were man why would watching, you what do you mean i wasn't dude. watching the footage back you <laughs> i was ready to tackle i was uh, i was gonna <laughs> come after ryan i was ready I'm, to pounce i'm so glad you didn't i was ready i should have pounced you kind of had that more scared look versus no. anger. No, I, ah, I well, what the <laughs> frick do you expect me <laughs> to do? That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not blaming you my for that. Head. I'm have, not blaming you no, for that. I have I a mid 250R sitting right here, and homeboys driving down freaking Brighton with me in the back. What am I supposed to do or think? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I've never been in that position. And I hope you never are. Uh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, unless I'm bringing you a brand new Lambo or something. <laughs> Give me 10 years. Yeah, I was just going to say, I guess also to take away from this, never prank kidnap anyone and not have a really, really good surprise <laughs> to make up for it. Like if you just were like, yeah, we're going to fake kidnap them and then we'll tell them it's a prank. <laughs> At the end of the day, not a prank. I would have been so sad. I do love when we tell the story to people. Like we told the guy in the chairlift and he was like, Oh wow! I need friends like you guys. That is funny. Like he. Well, yeah. Who else is gonna get to experience being kidnapped seriously without actually being kidnapped? I mean, that's quite a rush. Can we say the, the word kidnapped? Yeah, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about YouTube taking this video down in general. Okay, abducted. I think that's still on the red flag word list. I remember. Yeah. We Temporarily were... detained. <laughs> Taken for fun. Yeah. Oh. Shit. We actually might have to have to uh, silence. <laughs> That, I don't know. That's so, probably pretty shamed upon. Yeah, I was taken for fun by my friends. And that was that. I That still might be on some red flag lists. <sighs> my friends took me what for do fun. Do? Ooh, yeah, when you say it like that, it doesn't sound that well, right? <laughs> give me some. <laughs> oh, don't give me any, dude. Don't give me any. But yes, the 250R, the baddest machine on the planet. I, I mean, there's not anything else. Like, I'm actually going to freak out. The more I think about it, the more I'm comprehending it. This is not freaking real. Like, it's, it's the Mac Daddy. Like, what, what can't we do now? Tread 80, baby. It was nice to, you know, surprise someone with something and have them be excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bit yeah. of a cold streak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There's something about just uh, our giveaway winners. You know, we're hoping for the best with those. They're good kids. Yeah. You guys got to stay stoked. Come on, boys. <laughs> Send them to a week with Gavin. <laughs> yeah. you, you, won, you, you won this pit bike and three-day free all-inclusive stay with Gav. Dude, free breakfast burritos, and we got some steaks ready to go. They might not be the best. May 1st. <laughs> <laughs> three wheeler camp. What? what? No, we've been talking about. Oh, it. You're gonna do a. You're, oh. Wait, you're doing a three wheeler no, camp? We're thinking about trying okay. to do something. It's just such a red line or a gray line, as I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? On May first? Yeah, on May first. We're trying to host something, maybe. Oh, I love it. But so you got the date, but you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> We're thinking a lot That's about That's very it. us. That is very <laughs> I like us. that. <laughs> taking, a, taking a note out of our book. Yeah, you got to plan it, and then you go work on the other steps. But, uh, yeah, dude, I just want I, I want everybody to be able to ride a three-wheeler and see that I mean, there's nothing better. I mean, and I can prove this just by asking my good buddy Ryan, dude, does it beat a wheelie on a 185? Is there anything better in the world than a wheelie on a 185? Tell me right I, now. I did have quite a bit of fun, like, I, and I, I learned a lot. Like, is it not the best wheelie machine to learn on? You learn where mm -hmm. your tipping points are. You learn how to freaking have fun. It's Wait. nice because it's slow. You're going to do like a three-wheeler camp or you want to? That's the plan or something. Like, it's some type of three-wheeler event. I'm kind of loving how you brought that up because what yeah, you, I love it. when we got there, that's what it felt like. You said, grab whatever you want. These ones run. These uh -huh. ones are missing tires. These ones, well, they all run. They're all haunted. I mean, <laughs> okay. all you, haunted. you ran a little bit of a clinic with us, and we're all out there wheeling, and, and you're, you know, give me some. Yeah, baby. Oh, baby. You know, just hyping everybody up, and it really felt like that embodied the Shred 80 compound the most. And then we, like, couldn't stop. We were wheeling around for, like, three hours. Oh, no. Yeah, you guys wouldn't stop. I'm in there eating my fettuccine Alfredo for lunch real quick, and I just hear you guys going crazy. I look out my window. I see, I see freaking Ben just covering his eyes. And Evan is just losing his mind, dude. The boys are going crazy. I was like, this is what it's about, dude. But holy smokes, what a beautiful sight that one was, dude. Well, I, 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 I 
I, I threw it up and I covered up my eyes and I pointed at Evan and he literally started crying. He was so proud. This is the best day of my life. He, he literally said, I have never been this happy before. And see, hey, that's three rulers for you guys. <laughs> It really is the easiest thing because I, I always tell people, get on a pit bike, you learn the back, back brake. But I'm like, get on a, well, I was on, I was riding a 110 yep. three-wheeler. Yep. I was like, get on a 110 with a good back brake and you, you're dialed. You're dialed. You're throwing them all day. <sighs> Gav, you're crying, dude. Dude, that was, because <laughs> I, I haven't seen excitement like that in so long. <laughs> like the boys, you guys were doing laps back and forth. I was kind of upset because I couldn't find another wheelie machine. <laughs> I was like, oh, the 200X is flooding. I don't want to start on fire, but it might be worse worth it but shit <laughs> you guys are just ripping these hot laps i'm eating my fettuccine <laughs> fuck but man did it look fun and man was i stoked for you guys that's what it's about right there three-wheeler loving and having fun with your friends you guys sharing the stokes <laughs> dude right ah, tell me about it man so then yeah give me some may 1st may 1st yeah hopefully the three oh no we will have a three-wheeler clinic Honestly, I love it. And you're so close to town, it'd be so convenient for everybody. Oh, I'm so close to town. What do you got to say about that, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just looking at my notes. Um, Gav, you live in town, bro. <laughs> Don't, dude. What are you, I can go ride three wheels anywhere I want. I got a ditch to go bang. We can go do wheelies. Gav. Dude, if you live in town, you, you can't properly the, launch a 250R like that. You live in the middle of a very populated city. It's just uh, very convenient. That's all we'll say. <laughs> it's conveniently located. Country convenience. That's all it is. <laughs> redneck convenience. Uh, but apparently I'm a... What am I? A Rent, rental? Rental redneck. <laughs> Dude, that's the most offensive thing I think I've ever been called. <laughs> well, th the most offended I've ever seen you is when Ben called you a city boy. It's legitimately the most offended I've ever seen you. It did not feel good. No, you don't say that. Don't say that. Actually, don't say that. <laughs> Like, that's the only, like, a rental redneck. All right, at least I'm a part-time redneck, but city boy? <laughs> What's that? Do I uh, look like a city boy? I don't know, Gav. <laughs> what do you, what do you look mean? Look around right dude, now. Dude, a little luxury <laughs> never hurt anybody. <laughs> that's that's what Gav said the first time he got electric start on a wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing starts it. Hmm, a little luxury never hurt anybody. <laughs> the leg's not as strong anymore, but she starts. Oh, yeah, I oh. love that. All right, on on from three wheelers. Um, <laughs> you have, uh, I guess, a family member that that helped Ken look his best, and I'd love to bring him on here. Oh, you want to talk about? That, oh, I thought you were wanting to talk about my sister. I don't really want to talk about her, but I want to talk about Ken's. Gorgeous glow he has going on right now. Oh, come on here, Ken. You hop hey, in. Here. Just hop in. Just you, hop in the middle. And yeah, just hop share right the in mic. here. Jeez, yeah. dude. <laughs> dude. Calling Gav, Ev, Ev, Gav, Ken is Ev. Ken has been earning his Gav and Ev stripes the last couple days. He's been holding it down. Yeah. Look at this guy. I felt like Evan lately. Why? <laughs> Having to do all these stunts. <laughs> Okay, you, you've done one stunt. You got a spray tan. <laughs> you got a spray tan. But you, you have done a good job. You were pissing me off today on the <laughs> speed hill, though. You were pissing me off today. Bro, I, I go, was like... I go, Ben, what's wrong? He goes, dude, Ken and Ryan just suck. <laughs> yeah, I suck. I never said I was good. What? Sorry, me? Ryan. Sorry. Me too. Dude, you had to take a drink break one run in. <laughs> Oh, dude, yeah, no, I was I not good. I, I had to I adjust my done. boots. Damn, Gav, you really narked me out right dude, I'm there. I'm sorry, but it was so funny and so good. And then, no, I was doing fine. I went down the Black Diamond. I was carrying my weight. Ryan came back no, and he you killed were, it. You were, Ryan. You really were. But Ken <laughs> was, <laughs> dude, like the most stubborn 11-year-old girl I have ever seen out on the ski. I though. haven't skied in six years, and I'm looking at this as like, okay, I'm... I'm not the greatest to begin with, and I'm pretty rusty. Get off that first chairlift. We go over to the, the down, like, maybe a quarter mile, and you go onto this T-bar that says experts only, black diamond, double black diamond. And I was like, fuck that. No, that okay. might have been I for sure not the spot I to go. I understand that. I understand that. But I feel like the other ask were pretty reasonable. It was like, hey, we're going to go down this blue square. 
And you're like, no, I'm going down that blue square. Yeah, because I, I went down that blue square earlier, and it was... But we were like, hey, awful. we're all going down this blue square. We're filming it. We need to go down this run. Yeah, but the other blue square was the exact same. It's just slightly over, and I knew I could do that one better. You just pretty much proved your point wrong. It was the exact same. And you were just doing it to be, like... Stubborn. Stubborn. Yeah, but the first, like, 100 feet... Were, was not like a vertical drop off. It was, it it was a blue much, square. It was much less intimidating on I, my end. All right, whatever. I'm not a skier, okay? No, you I don't did claim, great. You got, no, I don't claim to be. Fine. I'll say you got warmed up, Ken. You got your skiing legs somewhat back. You're good, baby. <laughs> I, I think that's enough skiing for the next six or, six or seven years again. That's, good. that's a good schedule. <laughs> 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 that's good. Once a decade. What's well, a decade, dude? You're gonna, you're gonna, you got like two more times to ski, man. <laughs> Hope to last a little longer than that. He's no, not like that, but you get old, man. Fuck. I have seen Ken in his underwear more in the last two days than I have maybe in our 15 years of friendship. Yeah, I mean, he gets this spray tan and becomes a new guy, dude. He's he's all confident and I mean you get ready you, to do stunts and shit you get all tanned up you got to show it off you might as well I guess mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so proud Ken I mean you got what it takes you got what it takes <laughs> support for today's episode comes from true classic as a people-driven brand true classic believes that the clothes you wear should make you feel confident and comfortable so you can show up as the best version of yourself every single day we have an exclusive deal for our listeners and we want to hook you up with some true classic for a limited time only get 25 percent off with code cboys at trueclassic.com true classic isn't just for tees they have pants and workout clothes too i recently just got my first pair of true classic pants and it's really great because if you want to be more comfortable than wearing jeans but you don't want to wear sweatpants and kind of look like you're dressing down or like you didn't get ready for the day true classic pants are perfect true classic is built and designed for a man's body so no matter which product you buy you can feel confident that you'll get a premium fit that's consistent across all styles so get comfortable get going and upgrade your wardrobe with true classic get 25 percent off at trueclassic.com with code cboys free shipping is included on purchases over a hundred dollars a hundred percent risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy you can't go wrong it's look good feel good season true classic yo uh so <laughs> We went to Jack in the Box the other day. It was the worst eating establishment I've ever stepped foot in. And Evan, I feel like uh, if I say it, I want Ev to be in on this. Yeah, thing. well, let's do a trade out for that. All right, Ev. Last night, we were sitting there watching a movie, and uh, Ev is sitting in this, like, wooden kind of, like, kitchen chair, and it just breaks and he dents the wall and takes paint off with it. And this chair is in like 15 pieces on the ground. Dude, I don't even think I had hit the ground yet. And Gavin's already, what'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? Yeah, I mean. I didn't do anything. I know. I was hoping be, it was going to be something. To be cool. fair, Gavin invites us over to his family house. Very nice place. And then we do, we, we damage the wall. This is that's kind of unfixable right now. A little worried about that. What's the, what is the status on that? A homeboy called me. He said, "Go get some mud putty and clean that up yourself." <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! He's like, "We're in Silverthorne. It'll be a couple days." All right. Yeah, you could just go get some mud putty and uh, just throw some paint over it, sand it down, call it dialed. I was like, All right. <laughs> so we got something to do tomorrow. <laughs> some construction work to do tomorrow. I think morning. it's Ken's job because Ken is actually the one who set me up. You want to hear what's so screwed up? I was here like six months ago, and I think I felt that chair wobble. <laughs> <laughs> they were waiting. They were waiting. But dude, that hadn't happened. You just put that freaking dent in the wall. I hardly even put weight on it. It disintegrated. Like, I thought it was an actual prank chair, the way that it, oh. it came apart into like nine pieces. Like, usually if a chair breaks, it's like one leg. Yeah, one yeah. leg. And well, you're used to plastic chairs. That's a wooden chair. <laughs> Took out the freaking wall. I love that Ken was sitting in it earlier, and he leaned back, felt it crack, and went, oh, <laughs> and he leaned forward, and he grabbed the other chair and swapped, and he didn't say anything. Thanks, Ken. I pushed the seams back. I pushed the seams back. Goes on, I put it back together. <laughs> oh, it's never back together. What the heck, dude? I could have been out for the trip. 
<laughs> oh, dude, you could have. I mean, that would take it would take a lot more than that. And I'm but. still concerned I'm not going to be invited back to your place. Well, dude, you're already upset with the doors not locking, right? The hot tub doesn't have water. I mean, what else we got going on, Ev? <laughs> no, keep going. I mean, I know we're getting a one star on Yelp, but keep going. <laughs> Dude, I have not a single complaint about this place. Speaking of other one, than the chairs, one star on Yelp. Um, uh, <laughs> Evan brought us to Jack in the Box. It's like a fast food restaurant. The worst place I have ever eaten in my entire life. Ryan was, was driving. I didn't bring you there. Yeah, Ryan was driving. Ev was begging to go to. Jack I was not begging. I suggested. Dude, every time we go on a trip and there's a Jack in the Box, you're like, can we please, can we please go to Jack in the Box? I, I did want Jack in the Box pretty bad. And it was terrible. <laughs> it was so bad, dude. The service was horrible. The food was mediocre at best. And it was like 90 bucks. Well, dude, how bad a food could it have been, Ben, for you to say it was the worst food ever? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. I think it was just like the whole fact that like Evan was begging to go there and we got there and it was just a terrible experience. <laughs> and I literally looked at Evan and go, I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Should have taken him to Arby's over that. Well, we get Arby's all the time. We don't have Jack in the Box. Dude, I see box. why they're a failing <laughs> franchise. Jack in the Box, dude. Well, you ever hear any? Do you ever seen anything on Instagram? Let's go get Jack in the Box. No, you're I drunk. Never. You go get McDonald's. You don't go get Jack in the Box. <laughs> Freaking Jack in the Box, Ev. Chicken tenders when you're like 10 years old might Ev's have been also, good. Ev's also a White Castle fan, so that explains a lot. Okay, no, I can respect no. that. Dude, White Are Castle you? is the is a delicacy. You can't. I can, No, that's why I said yeah. You guys have negative things to say about oh, White Castle? I said I respect that. There's nothing wrong with that. Tender little sliders and little onions. Kill it. You got to add the cheese, though, but it's worth it. Any oh, ketchup? 40 cents. You have no, the ketchup? No, no. No condiments. No? The pickle. Pickle, pickle that's what I was going to say. Pickle, onion. Onion? Uh, cheese. Patty. Call Donald. I mean, if it's before 1 o'clock, I'll probably get the egg on there. No! What is Dude. up with you and eggs, bro? We go on this two-week RV trip, and Evan shows up with his duffel bag and an egg salad. And he goes, I got food for the next two weeks, boys. What is wrong with you? <clears throat> Dude, I love egg salad. That, But it just it's one of those things that, you know, you shouldn't have when you're in a confined space with others. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to put it, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, we have a have a toilet in the RV. I didn't think it was that big a deal. <laughs> what, do you go sit on the toilet to rip ass? Oh, no, not typically. <laughs> no, that's the problem. <laughs> was I really that stinky? You really only had, like, one stinky toot this whole trip. That's what I'm saying. I ate a half a dozen <laughs> yeah, egg salad sandwiches. To be fair, it did clear out the RV. <laughs> and we had to pull over on a busy <laughs> highway. <laughs> So we had to pull the caution tape out. <laughs> if we're going to talk about damage to the RV, I think it's Ken putting his melon through the shower doors. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Almost get Ken back in here. Yeah, oh, my fun. goodness. No, no hold on. Ken, what, yeah, what is the story behind the uh, <laughs> bathroom so we, destruction? So we were going down the road, and I had to use the bathroom, so I... You know, sit down, and we're kind of you know, going down, and it was going down. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm sit sit down in the bathroom, using the toilet, and then Ryan <sighs> sit Ryan, down. <laughs> I didn't know you were taking a shit, dude. You're taking a shit. Dude. I didn't want to <laughs> piss all over the wall because okay. we're going on the highway. Oh. So Ryan, like, swir- as I'm like starting to stand up, Ryan like swerves just that little bit, and you know, like you're. Loses your balance, you just kind of fall forward. And my head just goes straight into the door, and it just shattered everywhere. Of the shower. Of the shower, of the shower yeah. You hadn't even used it yet. I, I know, that's the worst part. And now we can't. And I, I got a shower curtain. But it was like one of those shower doors that uh, was kind of already textured. So all it took was just a little bit of brunt force for the entire thing to just shatter into pieces. It's it's literally in a million pieces all over that bathroom, and I cleaned up most of it, but there's still just that little bit of glass over here and there. I don't picture it as a little bit of brunt force. I picture it <laughs> him just Whoa. charging through it like Gavin taking out the running back. Like that's how hard he hit that shower door. Were you worried about your head? Did you look at me? No, I, I, I would have freaked out. Barely even felt it. Honestly, <laughs> that's the worst part. <laughs> 
I was Hold on. Just like, wait, wait, wait. Did you keep going after you fell through it? Like, no, I, I kind of like braced myself on the sides, but. <laughs> Man, you had to have been rattled. I was like, holy shit, this broke way too easy. <laughs> You're amazing, Ken, dude. The way you hit that water on the three-wheeler, there was zero per chance, zero percent chance of you flipping. And I flipped it. Ah, oh, shit. Just had to lean back. That was like the only requirement is lean back. And I'm not so sure you did. I thought I did, but apparently it wasn't enough. That happens during stunts. Sometimes you just black out. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get that snot rock and I just got coming out. <laughs> Gnarly snot rocking on that one. <laughs> Gross. But yeah, dude, when you're going for a stunt, just like I was hitting that stairs today, I hit that last that last level and I was like, oh, I might be able to stop, but I was kind of blacked out. <laughs> I didn't stop. <laughs> And it happens, Ken. As, as you start to do more stunts with us, me and Evan, and whoever else does stunts, you'll learn. Ken is a part of the stunt crew. How are you feeling about that? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I can join the stunt crew yet. We'll just get you a mullet, give you your wings. You'll start flying, dude. You'll start soaring. Yeah, have you always been such a wrecking ball? I've been pretty bad my whole life, yeah. Have you been getting injured, or do you just break things? Ooh, ah, I've, like, been real, you, I've been really good about not getting injured. Have you had any injuries? Football, ACL, labrum in the shoulder. That's why I'm surprised they're holding up great. Shout out to the surgeons. Modern day surgery kicks ass somehow. I hate it, but good job. Because the knee's holding up good. Three wheelers from the 80s, modern day surgery. Got it. <laughs> That's all you freaking need. <laughs> that I is guess. the first thing I've heard Gavin say is, Sick. Yeah. Uh, that's that not from the 80s. better today than it was back in the day. Uh, yeah, apparently, because this knee's still holding together, and the shoulder's all right, so we're here. The doctor is probably from the 80s. That's how that works. Oh, good math, Ed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably how that worked. Man, we're screwed in like 15 years, though. They're going to be dead. <laughs> you dude, so you huh? think people die so much quicker? Ken's getting more than two ski dude, trips. Isn't that crazy, we gotta live this long. Gosh, damn. Do you how do you think that in our lifetime there's gonna be some kind of scientific discovery that will make people live forever? No, screw that. I mean, ah, why would you want to live forever? That doesn't make it as fun. Because then you have a certain time to do it now. And then you got, and I'm a big God man too and everything. So that plays a big role in it. But we have a certain time to do this and that. Let's make the best of it. If you could do it forever, then you'd be freaking lazy. You wouldn't want to go and, I don't want ever want to waste a day. I want to freaking be doing something with my life that feels productive and fun and feel like I'm making achievements. So no, you want to have a time stamp on it. You want to be stressed. Wow. Yeah, that's a great I like point. That. Yeah, I like that too. I mean, that does show in your attitude and, and, uh, Work ethic, but um, God, can you imagine? And would it be just like the age that you are, and you just freeze at that age forever? Dude, you wouldn't even want that, dude. I mean, it, it sucks. I mean, my body's all so fricked up already. Dude, give <laughs> me another. Give, years yeah, old. give me another. Hey, you would not want to live in this body forever. Dude, how do you think I feel, bro? <laughs> even worse than me. That's yeah. why I'm like, dude. Let's get another 50, 60. We're like, yeah, let's go, baby. Yeah, I mean, we're good. Got another 10 years of stunts, hardcore stunts, and then another... 10? 10, 10? No, fi 10 to 15. Yeah, I'm stunt till I'm in the ground. All right, let's just go for it. Then, which right? might be 10 years, but yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. 10 yeah. to 15. And then we, we might have to dabble with a cage or something sooner or later. With age comes cage, right? That's what they say. <laughs> or do we just say <laughs> screw say that? that? Do we say screw that, Ev? No cage. No cage, right? Let's go out like men. I, I heard a really good quote one day. As people get older, they get more afraid of dying, but they have less to live. So they should technically be less afraid of dying because they've already accomplished more, you know? Dude, that's a really good point, actually. Right? But, like, oh, I guess that's just kind of a mental thing. I mean, you got to figure out how to just keep pushing. I never want to stop. That's the thing. Like, once I get so old, I can't ride a three-wheeler. Ah, dude, take me out, bro. Like, seriously, no more, like, oh, I want to be able to do shit forever, like, as long as I'm here. So, I don't know. I think the reason that older people say that is they – they appreciate what they have more mm -hmm. and they have like built up a life worth living and they have a family and kids, that makes grandkids. Me, no, I could definitely see from that perspective. And it's like, I guess when you say that, yeah, three wheelers right now are your only passion mm -hmm. or, or, you know, big thing you, that I, that I want to care do, about yeah. most now, but I mean, that'll change. Oh no, you're right. No, I could definitely see that. Do you see yourself having kids, Gav? Oh, hundred percent. 
oh, yeah, how this. many? I mean, well, bro, have you seen his family? True. Like, pop up a picture of of this family photo right in front of us right now. You said you have what, 120? Oh, we're, relatives? we're pushing 200. We're 200? pushing 200 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is insane. It's great. I love my family. Everything's awesome. But yeah, I probably want three or four kids. Three or four. Mm-hmm. Three. Yeah, that's the perfect number. I have yeah, I don't even care. I'd like boys. All girls would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Gab's daughter in the future is watching this right now. I was like, waiting for a girl would be fine. No, that would suck. <laughs> Sorry, Ty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why? Why would why would having a girl suck? Dude, because I know how dudes are. <laughs> You're one of them. Yeah. You're one of them. <laughs> 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 You would have reverse carded that so hard, dude. What are you saying, man? You can't pull that one on me, man. That is a big concern. Crepes. Crepes is right. Yeah, so I don't know. All girls would not be the move. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. I feel like it's usually like the people that say that are the ones that get. Uh, oh, I'm going to be so screwed. I guarantee it. But it's all right. Whatever, dude. Love everybody. Fuck it. <laughs> I don't care if my, my kid's a girl. I guess I'll still love her. <laughs> Do you have a freaking choice? <laughs> no. Well, that's just how it is. Everything how, happens. How are you guys going to raise your kids? Are, are you going to have like any, just let them do anything or have like more strict guidelines or things that you want them to do or don't do definitely pretty free realm let them just how i grew up i mean go to church learn the ways learn everything what if they don't want to go to church then they don't freaking have to i mean you're gonna go to church the first like five six or no like you're five six years old seven years old that's when you're gonna go learn some stuff and see if you like it see if you're kind of falling into it and if you're like 10 12 years old screw this all right i'll try and push it on you a little harder but i'm not gonna make you make you make you make you make you it's just one of those things you can't do and that's kind of like I don't know. I've always felt that connection. So mm-hmm. that's just one of those things. Do you think you'll be more nervous for your kid? Like, because your dad lets you, you know, be pretty free roam, let you, you know, yeah. go do I'm, dangerous things per I'm se. A free bird. Do you think that you will be more scared for your kids because you know all the sketchy shit that you got yourself into? Dude. I mean, you kind of heard him earlier, though, Ryan. He doesn't think he's very sketchy. Dude, I'm not that sketchy. That's the thing. But no, I do. I do have worries about that. I, hey, 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 hey. We, it's, 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 it's fun over hurtness. I just watched you flail down a metal staircase. Boy, was I having fun, dude? <laughs> but I guess if the ratio is fifty-one fun, forty-nine sketchy, that's pretty sketchy. Yeah, but what do we do? Send it. Run it. Run it. <laughs> I love that F. Let's freaking go, baby. <laughs> Dude, we can go fire that 250 yard and go jump the golf course right now. If we want. <laughs> God damn, keep talking to me, man. Yeah, oh. let's fire the Dune tires on and just do <laughs> go it. Get the, go get the power tires running. on. Get the Banshee, the 250 yard running right now. Maybe I don't even want to talk it. about the Banshee. Oh. <laughs> but no, go, going back to your question. No, that definitely. Ah, dude. Holy shit, I don't know how my dad even lets me be that crazy, honestly, because I, I know I push the limit. I take some gnarly diggers. Ah, yeah, my kid better not be as fucking crazy. <laughs> dude, it's your payback. Dude, I think um, I agree, like, kind of let him do whatever. But, like, when I was a kid, the only thing I wanted to do was race dirt bikes or snowmobiles. And my parents never let me. And I always, like, kind of hated that. And now that I'm older, looking back at it, so happy. Why? Oh, dude, it's just like risk to reward is not worth it. The time is not worth it in my eyes. Like, and, 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 uh, I think that it made, played a huge factor in me just being more interested in like the things that I was doing at the time, which then led to my meeting my best friends. And now we have C boys and like everything happened for a reason. True. Mm -hmm. I don't think like, racing is that worth it i don't think like hockey is worth it from yeah. from seeing cj playing hockey and now his head concussions mm-hmm. and everything like that he would say the same thing not worth it yeah no and just like certain things like that and obviously it's like you know everyone's got their own opinion i guess it's just mine but um yeah i don't know it's it's like just certain things that the kids or or your kids or me when i was younger would be like i just don't understand why can't i do that yeah they're like, no, trust me. And then you get older and you're like, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Made sense. So it's because you think you might have gotten really hurt and screwed up or what? I, I don't know. I just think, like, 
what do you have to gain from that? It's not like I would have gone pro. I think you can only say that because you must not be as passionate about the bikes or the three wheelers or whatever. Cause yeah, but I it, still loved it. I uh, dude, like I lived. If you're able I to say that it. it's not worth it, then you don't love it as much as the people that are taking those risks and be like, it's worth it. Ah, uh, there is a flip side that this is how my dad actually unsold me from racing. He goes, talk to Cody Matthews. He goes, how much? Ask Cody how much he rides in a weekend. I go, Cody, you race cross country snowmobiles. How how much? How many hours are you riding a weekend? He goes, oh, I ride for, you know, two hours during my race, and I'm traveling, I'm doing all these things, and I get to ride for two hours. And he goes, then my dad went, well, look how much you're riding. You wake up at ten in the morning and you go ride. You go all the places you want to go. You do all the things you want to do, and then you come home at eight when it's dark. You get all those hours in. But I can see the competitiveness for you and how much it advanced you as a rider, which fucking really shows compared to me on any type of motorized machinery versus you. Like, do you think there was more of a competitive aspect in it for you then? Oh, definitely. Like, when I started, it was just to have fun and then realizing that I totally like the mm -hmm. competitive part and it made me want to be a better rider. Or it just happened. I just wanted to ride all the time. So the more time you put in, you just get better there's literally no way to get better than just ride that's why I'm even if it you. isn't just the gravel pit or the race track anywhere just ride because you have it dude you still could race you could still go whip all those youngins out no i couldn't i'm oh, crusty F i just do wheelies now dude. get a few jumps here all and there right. well yeah but no what you're saying i can see the competitiveness and that's part of the reason i want to race three wheelers like really bad you do oh do they still race oh, them? Oh, yeah, they, they got some boys some still. Oh, yeah, they do. Dude, they Florida. ice race them. You they, need to come up next winter and race that 250R. Yeah, that needs oh, to happen. No, 100%. Definitely we'll Maybe do I'll that. Maybe I'll hop on the 450. Let's do it. Let's run it. But, yeah, they run up, up up in Oregon, up in, yeah, all along there. They do flat tracks. They do even motocross still. And, uh, no, I just want to go kill it. I don't know. Just have fun. I'm so passionate about it. I want to be the best there freaking is at it. I know That's all there is to it. I want to go do a backflip on it. And you want to backflip a three-wheeler? No, it gets crazy. I want to be the first person because the backflip's been done. I want the front flip. <gasps> Dude, we got to work on the jump yeah. first. <laughs> I, don't, I know. Yeah. It's going to be, be next fucking week. Gav's going to have like a little kicker set off his trailer, the, and he's going to be trying to do a backflip. No, the backflip. Yeah, we need to get you a foam pit. Yeah, we do need to figure that one out fast. <laughs> well, but he has got a lake. That's, that's just as good. Yeah, we do got a lake, and we got Honda that will fire right back up. So. <laughs> But no, the backflip. No, so first. nobody is front flipped a three wheeler. Not that I know of. And not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ed probably both have done that, but yeah, not on purpose. No, how cool would that be though? Just jam on that front brake and huck. Yeah, no, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Almost impossible, but it's definitely still possible. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to picture it. Yeah, it's definitely. I possible. mean, you use one of those nitro circus like the ramp sets, the folding or ramps or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah, the you know what actually kind of would work is the. It doesn't track, you know how normally the back or the front flip ramps have like where it goes up and then the ramp drops. You would just need a three tiered ramp. Oh, like that. Oh, because the yeah. wheels in the middle. A little three. So hey, it would, quit it giving just, out the secrets. We gotta, it would just. What are you trying? You're trying to beat me to death? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, no, I want you to the world. No, I, I ain't doing no, a well, front dude, flip on a fucking freak three wheeler. Do it. Come, come, be my best friend if you want to do it with me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> damn it. No, front backflip, that should be easy money. Back, oh, sorry. I don't know. No, you you just saw just that angle I had up there? <laughs> <laughs> that was full torque. Dude, it was no, the same angle as the three-wheeler off the trailer. Dude, straight 90 looking in the air. Looking in the air. <laughs> Dude, one of the worst feelings I've ever had. It was, no. Yeah, I was going to say it was almost equal to being locked in there, but. You had no, a big day that day, for sure. Well, dude, the past, like, 48 hours, I mean. I have Big Ken taking the girl I like. <laughs> I, mean, I have, yeah, I got kidnapped by my best friends. I got a, a 250R, the best three-wheeler in the world, given to me. The Colorado meat grinder. You got cheese grated. I got cheese grated. I figured out Evan's one of the, na Evan's one of the nastiest gears on this side of the western slope right now. I'll tell you that. <sighs> you were showing up those youngins, man. They were like, Thank who's Thank this you. guy? But holy shit, what a ride, baby. Yeah, it's been an eventful couple days, and it's like a third of the way through the trip. It's good. It's fun. Like, I'm having a, a really good time, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm excited to see, like, you know, what keeps happening. The no vi kidding. The vibes have been high, and we've just been rolling. Dude, oh if we gosh. keep on this pace, 
dude. <laughs> <laughs> what can't happen? <laughs> We're gonna be doing three wheeler front flips by Don't next week. Say that. We're in mo after mo hooking backflips. We're feeling good, baby. Don't say that. Why? Because. Don't give us any ideas. No, I just love when you say, don't wow. say that. Oh, don't say that. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that energy can't be matched. No, dude. Oh, no. I mean, that's three-wheeler energy right there. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude, did you see that? Yeah. Ken was yeah. one. All right. Do we let him join? Uh, I don't even. Do we want to let everyone know about the three-wheeler? Triceratops well, they, everyone, handshake? They've been starting to see it more. I'm sure you've, you've seen Triceratops? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, you want to join? I mean, you, you've been a bad boy lately. You kind of have the characteristics to fit it. I think I'm already, uh, I'm already halfway through it. So you want to start giving it to us? Give me some. No, no, no. What was that? <laughs> what, what you- Dude, no, 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 no. All right. You put them up top. And <laughs> whenever you're getting ready to do something cool on a three-wheeler, you got to look at me or Evan, and you go... <laughs> 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 yeah, make the cool noises with it, and it'll get you stoked. The three wheeler gods are with you, and you'll be okay. <laughs> you think so I'm that, joking? Why so, do you think we're okay so right that, now? So that's what that means when you and when you, you and Ev look at each other and do this. Well, it's either that, or we're at a bar and there's a nice heavy over there that could be our three bills. <laughs> that, that's your. <laughs> Take it today, man. (laughs) (laughs) Only in special circumstances. Guys, I'm sweating, Gab. You know what? The last few days have been incredible, and I'm excited. We have more, more time together. We're going to Moab tomorrow. We have Hell's Revenge, dude. Moab. Taking the RC cups, Hell's Revenge. Oh, baby. Dude, you want to get some reactions? Let's take an R6 up Hell's Revenge. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Dude, people were freaking out. We were there last year with three wheelers with no helmets on. People were looking, dude, you're crazy. You're crazy. And oh, oh there's this lady looking at my friend. Because I'm, I'm a decent rider, but my friend wasn't that good of a rider. And <laughs> he wasn't wearing helmet. And this lady was passing us on a Jeep coming out of Hell's Revenge, looking at my buddy, going, don't do it. Don't do it. He started freaking out so bad. I felt so bad. But we made it. But fudge. <laughs> oh, don't get me worked up. We're talking about three wheelers a lot right now. We're talking about some turn bikes for a second. Cool me down. <laughs> hey, Four wheelers? Oh, All right, see you guys. <laughs> How's your quad, right? <coughs> Still dead. That sucks, dude. You shouldn't have got a Yamaha. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem at that point. Oh, darn. Or putting lawnmowers on front of it. That was cool. <laughs> dude. I can't tell if he's being genuine or just trying to no, be. No, it wasn't. It was good. It was I really think he's good. being a dick right now, right? <laughs> if you put lawnmowers on your wheeler. I couldn't do it now, though. Because you guys have already done it. You're damn right. You can't just get it. <laughs> I know. You did the snowplow. Did the snowplow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah. was nice. Yeah. Well, we did, we did the roller skates. Too. I mean, we've, we've hit a lot of stuff on a three-wheeler. That shit. I mean, the BMX bike, that was a terrible idea. But, man, did it work great. We made a four-wheeler. <laughs> We made a four wheel. Yeah, no, we put two wheels up front because that stupid freaking. You should have used a unicycle. No, that wouldn't have worked. That's one wheel. Yeah, because it's a three wheeler. Oh, so one plus one. I mean, turning my three wheeler into a three wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but we put the BMX bike up front. It worked. Emotional. Great. I rolled that thing though pretty bad. Yeah, that sucked. We're a helmet, kids. And on that note, Gab, thank you for your time. We love you. Everybody, please go follow Gavin everywhere. Shred eighty. It Love was- you guys. Give him some. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. God, I love you, Gav. Love you guys. Thank you. All, All right, right. Peace. <laughs>